Hello and welcome to the Enduro World Series show, the show that brings you the inside line on the very best action from all the EWS racing. So this is it then, the grand finale, and what better place for a finale than the spiritual home of Enduro, Finale Ligure. Yes, we return for the 10th year to the Italian Riviera for a spot of sun, gelato, and of course, a showcase of mountain bike racing like no other, the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations. Before we get into all of this weekend's action, let's take a look at just what the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations entails and how it differs from a regular Enduro World Series round. The Enduro World Series Bluegrass Trophy of Nations returns for the first time since its inception in 2019. And once again, we find ourselves at the classic Enduro venue of Finale Ligure. The Bluegrass Trophy of Nations differs from a regular EWS round in that riders compete in teams representing their home nation. Each team is made up of three riders qualified from the global rankings. Team tactics must come into play as all three riders ride on the course at the same time and all must finish each stage for their times to stand. Tactics of how the teams will ride as well as the chemistry and the communication between the riders is vital to their success. Some teams choose to chase the fastest rider down the trail in a train, whereas others prefer to space out and race their own race. There's no one correct answer, and that's all a part of the puzzle of the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations. The fastest cumulative time over all stages takes the win, with the fastest team of the day taking home the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations UCI jersey and medals. Let's take a look at some of the top teams to watch this weekend. As is a common theme in mountain bike racing, France have a strong showing, with Isabel Cordurier, Morgan Char, and Melanie Poujan returning to defend their title in the women's field. This combination proved effective in 2019, and with Cordurier and Char respectively first and second in the overall rankings, along with Poujan, 2021's overall EWS champion, you would be a fool to bet against the Gallic powerhouse. Great Britain will be determined to put up a fight, however, with Bex Barona, Hattie Harnden, and super sub Becky Cook standing in for Ella Connolly at the last minute, making up a strong team that can draw on Barona's experience in helping take Team GB to second place back in 2019. However, it takes more than just having the top ranked riders to win here in the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations, but also how well you all ride together. So also keep an eye on some underdogs in Team Canada and Germany who, if they pull together, could upset the balance. In the men's field, Canada's third place team from 2019, made up of Jesse Melamed, Reese Werner and Remy Govan, returns to improve upon their result. Melamed sits in first place in the overall and with strong finishes from teammate Govan and Squamish local Reese Werner throughout the season, the Canadians are looking like a force to be reckoned with. No doubt they will have been getting some practice laps together on their home trails as well. All three riders high in the overall rankings, New Zealand will be another team to watch. Cole Lucas, Matt Walker and Ed Masters, a teammate of Walker, make the Kiwis a strong contender for the title. However, at the time of filming, Cole Lucas was nursing an injury, so the lineup may switch up to feature Charlie Murray instead. 2019's winners, Team USA, have only one season veteran, Richie Rood, with the rest of the team made up of Nicholas Nesteroff and Colton Peterson. It will be interesting to see if Rood's typical winning ways rub off on the two newcomers at the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations. Whoever takes the rainbow jerseys home this weekend, we will be in for a thrilling day's racing as our teams battle it out for the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations title in Finale Ligure. It's not just a showcase of incredible riding this weekend. Bike manufacturers treat their riders and go all out with new tech and custom paint jobs for the occasion. Check out some of the stuff we find on a wander through the pits. With riders representing their homelands during the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations, it came as no surprise that there were some seriously nice custom paint jobs on show. 
Tech Team Nuke Proof Rider Elliot Heap's custom Giga 275 with a Vans theme design. And yes, your eyes aren't playing tricks on you, that's the famous Vans waffle sole running down the down tube. As you'd expect for a Nuke Proof Rider, Elliot is also running their Horizon pedals and has made sure his handguards match the rest of the bike. Not one to be left out, Dan Booker was riding this amazing Aussie theme Nuke Proof, but interestingly opted for some oil slick effect flat pedals instead of clips. Wandering over to the Trek Pits and we spotted what looks to be the new SRAM drivetrain on Hattie Harndon's bike. Now, this has been seen at various races already and mechanics have been tight-lipped when it comes to information on it. So it came as no surprise that when we grilled a very nice Trek mechanic, we got this in reply. No comment. We also asked him about the cassette, but true to form, all we got back was no comment. Which means for now, all we have to go off are these spy shots. One prototype that we were allowed to talk about was Matt Stoddard's unnamed polygon with 170mm of travel front and rear. Again we have a bluegrass trophy of Nation's GB themed paint job, but Matt's cockpit setup is what really caught our attention. There's a works components 5mm reach adjust headset which we presume gives Matt a little more room up front, and his Magura MT7 brakes have these custom oak levers with a reach and bite point adjustment. More importantly, they also have his name written on them. Have your name written on custom components? It doesn't get much more trick than that. Finally, over at EXT, we have their prototype Airshock named the Aria. Speaking to EXT, the most exciting feature looks to be the dual positive air chamber, which is designed to imitate the feel of a coil shock. So by choosing the pressure of the two chambers separately, EXT claims you will be able to have a smooth initial stroke before it ramps up to feel more supportive at the end of the travel. And if you are wondering about availability, EXT are currently saying around March time next year. Some lovely looking bikes there then. How about those nuke proofs? Finale Ligari, as usual, provided some excellent racing. We caught up with our man on the ground, Captain Enthusiasm himself, Josh Carlson, to find out what went down on the day. There we go then, Josh. What a set of results today. Team France unchanged since 2019 in the women's field. They just steamrolled it, didn't they? They steamrolled it. I mean, they had to make it happen. Melanie had a bit of a puncture on stage two there and it cost him a lot of time. But to make it happen on such an epic day in the Finale Hills, I mean, they, they swept the podium at the last weekend's Ludenville round and they continued that momentum here in Finale to... Uh, just carry on right where they left off back in 2019. Let's talk about then the Kiwis, Team New Zealand taking the win in the men's race. But was it a bit easier for them whenever Team Canada went out early doors? They were going to be their big competition, weren't they, really? It was, but they still had to make it happen. And there was so much carnage up there amongst the day. I mean, two 14-minute monsters to start. They may have had a, a much easier path to get there, but they still had to burrow their way and dig their heels in to make it happen. Well, we talk all year, we've talked all year about how reliable these modern enduro bikes are and how mechanicals now we seldom see them, but I mean, those first two stages had a higher attrition rate than Predator, didn't it? It was carnage. It was absolute carnage out there. I don't know what kind of snipers were up in the hills, but I think <laughs> the hunters were out early. And my goodness, the end of stage one and the end of stage two was a war zone. Broken bodies, broken bikes, wheels, chains, derailers, everything, you name it. It was coming down that hill in pieces. So I think bikes are getting more uh, safer <laughs> or more reliable, but the conditions here today and how fast everybody was riding, I think the limit, the level that everyone was pushing through today was, was just something we haven't seen before. That'll give me nightmares and dreams for the rest of my life. <laughs> the noises and sounds that were coming out of those bikes, oh my goodness. One of the big things that we saw throughout this race today was that it felt like the teams that were having fun were going fast. Do you know what I mean? Team Germany, Leapfrog, Team GB on the last stage in the women's race to take second place. Yep. You looked at the Kiwis, they're all big friends, they all race together in the men's race. Yep. Team France rolled up to the line this morning that they were going out for a Sunday ride in the men's true, race. True. 
do you think that's the key to the Trophy of Nations? That kind yeah. of like bottom of me? Absolutely. And to just drop in and have confidence in, in your mates, in your teammates. Riding that fast, that close to somebody, you have to trust them for one. <laughs> but it's the most fun thing you can do. Like when you go out for a trail ride with your mates, that's what you do. And when you all start like turning up the pace more and more and more and you start giggling and making mistakes and they step out, then you step out. And some of the rides I did with McKay during my industry race were going as fast as I possibly could. And we were literally one bike length apart. If he went down, I was going straight over the top of him. <laughs> well, there we have it then. We sent, don't just take our words for it. We sent a... You can call yourself a well-respected professional. Maybe well Don't respected. Stop, stop there, yeah. We sent a well-respected professional up onto the stages to experience the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations for himself. We're here in Finale Ligure, the Trophy of Nations. It's the main race day here, and we're up here on stage two. This is a second monster stage for these athletes. Stage one was over 14 to 15 minutes. Stage two finishes with this hectic rock garden, which is about 15 to 16 minutes into their second stage of the day. Riders are going to be coming down here fatigued, their arms are going to be on fire, they're going to be breathing through every hole they have, and it's a brutal way to finish over 30 minutes of racing to start their day. This is only stage two of five for a lot of these athletes, and to finish with a rock garden like this, whoo, it's a little gnarly. We're going to head down to check out some lines. The crowd's going crazy, there's plenty of fans up here to wait for the carnage, so let's go and have a look and see what we can find. As the riders come down through this section here, they're already on fire, like we mentioned before, but there's a couple of different lines. There's a high left line, which is straighter, but way more riskier. There's a line on the right here, there's a few more flatter rocks, it's a little bit higher speed, and you can come out the bottom here, death grip, happy days. It's pretty interesting to see how the riders come down here. You can see the ones that are super fatigued and the ones that are still paying attention. We've already seen some overtakes. Some of the teams are mixing amongst each other after the huge 16 minute stage prior. So uh, it'd be really interesting to see how the riders attack this last section and which line they take and who can survive <laughs> and who can come undone. I mean, it's never easy to finish a stage with one of the most technical sections, but also um, we did go up and have a look, so we did know where we were going. Yeah, hard. And also, like, a lot of people yeah, there, like, you're like, oh, I don't want to mess this up. And you also want to put on a show and, like, pretend or, like, make it seem like you are going fast. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, I think the people who watch there, they sometimes think, oh, they don't go that fast, but they don't know that we did, like, 17 minutes of stage before. <laughs> so by the time you arrive there, you're just completely done. At the end of that stage, I think I went too hard up top and kind of paid for it at the bottom. Like... I just tried to like hold on as hard as I could and just make sure I didn't blow a hand. It was quite rough. Downhill men's, the final stage of the Trophy of Nations, the final stage of the 2022 Enduro World Series season, and it's the scariest, the gnarliest, the spiciest trail of the entire year. <laughs> this skinny little single track up here that is lined with spectators, four or five deep, is some of the most treacherous terrain we've ever seen in Enduro World Series history. It descends down the side, side of the hill here to the Lig Ligurian coastline, and the riders have gelato and beers waiting for them back in finale. Not only do the riders have to deal with rock slabs like we saw on stage two, but up here on Downhill Men's, it's a mixture of dirt, sand, rocks, rubble, pine trees, spectators, you name it, it's up here getting thrown at the riders. Whoa! One wheel wrong. <laughs> in these hectic big rock slab sections. Oh, Kate Lawrence sends it. Can bring it all undone. It's a very, very fine line between being a hero or going back to zero on this last stage of the weekend. The crowd was amazing, yeah. It was really good. But yeah, we knew at the top we had like quite a big gap to second place. So we are like just right smooth and like pushed, but not too hard to like uh, keep the bike in one piece and not have like an issue. Josh, time for the all-important team of the day. Who was the star performer for you? Man, I was really impressed with Germany. The women's and the men's team. I think they really stepped up today. They had some dramas. They had just definitely had to survive the day and, and uh, battle through the carnage. But with the way they rode those big stages, with the enthusiasm they had at the end of the day, um, I was really impressed with that and I was stoked to see it. How big an influence do you think Ennis Toma was? Because at the, I was at the start line and there were some nerves at that start line but she's raced so much she's been there she's done that and she was just laughing having fun and that seemed to radiate that experience head did that count today do you think of the women's race big time especially with how big today was the liaisons were long and your mind can wander um Texi was the same texi has been there done that and he brought the other boys together and they really created a team atmosphere for the for the pro women and the pro men and it showed at the end of the day on the results sheet 
I'm going to be a bit biased. I'm going to say Team Ireland for, you know, quite a small mountain biking nation to be right up there in the top ten. And I think Greg, Keelan, they're both great ambassadors for the sport. They maybe don't realise what an impact that'll be having on those younger riders coming through. But we need to talk about Team GB, don't we? I mean, what the like, agony and ecstasy. Wow. Like, in the, in the women's race, third place on the podium yep. again. Yep. Great result. But for the men's, what could have been? Oh, what could have been? And to start on that first stage, I mean, it was heartbreaking. That first stage is really what set the tone for the rest of the day. And to have a such a catastrophic mechanical like that, like it's really hard for anyone to recover. They did their best. The liaison finished in a very difficult spot and they were caught in a tricky situation. They did the best they could. Matty Saddard stepped up in that second stage to really bring the boys home. Unfortunately, worst case scenario happened and it's just a matter, it's a question mark. Shoulda, woulda, coulda, maybe. We'll have to wait and see till next year. Comprehensive as ever there from Carlson. Now for a look behind the scenes with Team GB to see how their six strong setup dealt with the unique situation of racing as teams during the Bluegrass Trophy of Nations. Hi, my name is Matt Stuttard, I'm 29. Usually race for Polygon Thatcher Racing, but well, we're here racing for Team GB. Bex Barr Honor, I'm uh... From the UK, living in Scotland, riding on Yeti Cycles team for Team GB. So yeah, I know my teammates pretty well. Hattie, I know from just racing on the scene. Ella had a crash, unfortunately, last weekend in Lunenville, who was part of Team GB for the women. And unfortunately, she got a check by a doctor and was told not to race. And then our reserve, Chloe, was also had a crash and hit her head. So two concussions wasn't ideal for Team GB, but then another girl called Becky, who's been racing the full EWS, she'd flown home, but then she, <laughs> we've managed to scramble her back out and she came out Thursday night, but literally booked a flight, flight like hours before she was leaving. Yeah, so like riding for GB, that's the reason I got on the plane last minute and just like, I couldn't, Missed this opportunity, so yeah, I was all up for it. Both teammates, Elliot Heap and Alex Store. Alex Store, he's a little bit quieter than Elliot. He's kind of similar to me, pretty chill, but gets things done when he needs to. Probably one of the most talented people I've seen on a bike. Ah, young Elliot, absolute nutcase. Constant, constant giving it the app, but ah, he's brilliant. His just morals are always high. So Trophy of Nations, it's a lot different to the usual single events that we do where we're just representing ourselves. So we have three riders for each nation. We're allowed to ride in a train or we can ride separately, um, but our overall combined time is what matters. So on some stages, we're gonna swap who goes at the front. On other stages, one person's gonna be at the front all the way down. But I think most of it's gonna come down to a game of rock, paper, scissors at the start. Rock, paper, scissors. Oh, come on. Oh. So tactics-wise, it's um, kind of a group decision because if you've got someone following you but you don't like that, it can be a bit off-putting, so we're trying to get the best time out of everyone. But, yeah, I'm pretty... Me and Becky are pretty keen to sort of latch onto Hattie's wheel for um, some of the longer stages. And then some of the shorter stages, we think it's probably better to leave a gap and just sort of race your own race. Yeah, so obviously with Trophy Nations being a bit of a different format, like pressure at a normal race is quite high and it's all down to you, whereas it's kind of spread over free, free riders this time. It is a bit more of a chilled vibe. We're all bunched together, so if, if someone makes a mishap, you just give them a quick shout, come on, keep up, keep going. And yeah, it's a lot more chill, but for us racers, as soon as you hear them beeps, like something just switches in your mind, so everyone will be seeing the red. Yeah, you do have to, I suppose if you're following, you do have to trust them. We all like ride at a similar similar pace, kind of. So we're learning it pretty quickly. But from what I saw in practice, like, I'd happily follow either of them. It doesn't feel like an EWS. It's very different for this race, so pressure's off. Yeah, mechanicals in this race is huge. Like, we've got free bikes and free riders to get down five stages and it's an absolutely huge day on the bike it's like 65k of pedaling 2000 meters of vert no 
unfortunately for Team GB, um, we had a bit of a mechanical for Matt on stage one, and um, and that was the day done from there, really. This is actually the first race in 12 years that I've not actually finished, so a bit good. <laughs> we'll head down to stage five and give everyone a screen. Bex is a great uh, racer and a person. Like she's really helped me to like just a beer and just to like even like feeding me and stuff like at lunchtime and just like you know it's, it makes it a lot easier. I obviously she's super fast as well and just trying to trying to learn a little bit and tag on the back of them. It's like super big day out, so yeah, we're just trying not to go in too hard and just yeah, going with it and enjoying it and yeah, following each other, which is good fun. Yeah, we're alive. It's been massive. It's been a really big day today, um, but we've all made it. We made it all our stages on time, just about, and we all made it down stage. It's pretty good. Yeah, a little bit, <laughs> like, disappointed in myself. Oh, don't be disappointed. Oh, no! We're well proud of each other. <laughs> yeah, we might not have had a team if you haven't come out. Yeah, riding for your home country is pretty cool, so we don't get to do it all, all year round. It's much more individual, so it's, I don't know. We were singing the national anthem from yesterday. It's quite cool. You can't really end a, end a season in a better place, and like getting to race with your mates on a full race run is it's it's brilliant. There we have it then, Team GB. What a tale of two different teams. Podium glory for one, and bitter disappointment for another. But look, let's not dwell on it too much. There is plenty more racing heading your way in 2023. Thank you for watching. We look forward to bringing you much, much more next season. Until then, we'll see you there.